Hi, welcome to this part of Piano Basics. At this point, we know about scales and chords. So what we're going to do in this part is combine the two. Knowing the notes that we have in a scale, we will know the chords that will be in that scale. For this part, instead of giving you the formula and explain the logic behind it, I'm going to do the reverse and first explain how that formula came to be. So let's take the C major scale. The notes of that scale are C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. And then it repeats. From each note that there is in a scale, we can build a chord based upon it. So we're going to have a C chord, a D chord, an E chord, and so on and so forth. What we need to know is whether the chord is major, minor, or diminished. As we learned in the previous part, we can recreate all the type of chords from the major chord. So if the major chord don't fit in the scale, we're going to change it in a minor chord or a diminished chord. So let's create a chord on the first note in the scale. The C. C is our root note. And from that, we need the major third, two whole step above the root. One, two, we get E and up from the major third, up by one whole step, and one half step, we have the fifth. So for the C major triad, we have C, E, and G. And those three notes are in the C major scale. So we know that the C chord in the C major scale is major. Let's do the same for the following note. We have D. Create a major chord. D is the root. F sharp is the major third. And A is the fifth. D is in the C major scale. F sharp is not in the C major scale. And A is. Since F sharp is not, in the scale, we know that D major is not in the C major scale. Now let's try D minor. Take down the third by a half step, and you have F. So D, F, and A. So that's D minor. D is in the scale, F also is in the scale, and A is in the scale. So now we know that D is a minor chord in the C major scale. Let's continue. We have E. Let's create E major. E is the root. G sharp the major third. And B the fifth. E and B are both in the C major scale, but G sharp isn't. So let's try the minor. The minor third, G is in the scale of C. So E in C major has to be minor. Next up, we have F. F major, we have F, A, and C. All those notes are in the C major scale. So F in C is major. Moving up, we have G. G major, G, B, and D. Also here, all the notes are in the C major scale, so G is major in C. Still going up, we have A. Let's create A major. We have A, C sharp, and E. A is in the scale, C sharp is not, and E is in the scale. So let's try the minor. Now C, the minor third, is in the scale. 
So we know that A in C has to be minor. And then the last note we have B. For B major we have B the root, D sharp the major third, and F sharp the fifth. B is in the scale, D sharp and F sharp are not. So we're going to try the minor. So that's B minor, B and D are in the scale, but F sharp isn't. So let's try the diminished. B, D and F are all in the key of C. So B in C major has to be a diminished one. And remember to play the diminished, take the major, take down the major third to create the minor, and then take down the fifth by one half step to create the diminished. And then next we're back on C. So now we know that C is major, D is minor, E is minor, F is major, G is major, A is minor, and the last one, B, is a diminished chord. So now I demonstrated the formula for the chords in the major scale. We have major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, and diminished. Now we're going to quickly talk about the number system. Very simply put, we're going to assign a number to the notes in the scale. For example, in C major scale, the first note is C, so C is the 1. Then we have D, the second note. So D is the 2, E is 3, F is 4, G is the 5, A, 6, and B, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then the next one is not 8, it's still C, so let's call it... One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one again. Simple as that. Now, why the number system is used in music? It's because it makes our lives much more easier. If I go back to my chord formula in the major scale, now I can say that in any major scale, the one chord is major, the two chord is minor, the 3 chord is also minor, the 4 chord is major, the 5 chord is major, the 6 chord is minor, and the 7 chord is diminished. Knowing that, if we were to play a song in the key of C that goes like this, C, G, a minor, and then F. I can say, using the number system, that I played C, the 1, then G, that's the 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, the 6, and then F, the 4. One, two, three, four. Now let's imagine that the singer you're playing with wants to move up to the key of D. You will no longer be playing C, G, A, and F since those chords are in the key of C. But using the number system, you know that you're playing a one, five, six, and four chord progression. So what you can do is translate the number system in the key of D, the key of D major.
you have to play the one, that's D, and you know that the one is major. So you're going to play a D major. Then you have to play the five. One, two, three, four, five. That's A. And you know from the formula that the five chord is major. So play A major. Then you have the six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's B. And in the formula, the six chord is a minor. So play B minor. And finally, we have four. One, two, three, four. We have G. And we know that the four chord is always major. So we have this. D major. A major. B minor. And G major. And that is why the number system is so useful. It frees us from using code names while still conveying the same information. You will also see in the song that you will learn what's called inversions of chord. An inversion is a way to play the same chord in different ways. For example, the notes that compose the C major chord are C, E, and G. But you can play the same notes, so play the same chord in a different way. If I take the root note here and play it up here, for example, I'm still playing C, E, and G. So that's a C major chord, but now E is at the bottom. And by doing that, We created the C first inversion, C major first inversion. Let's do it again and take E up, up here, and play this. Now we're playing G, C, and E. And that position is the C major second inversion. But if we do it again one more time, so taking G up, we have now C, E, and G. And we're back to the regular position. So in a triad chord, in a chord that only has three notes, you can only create two inversions. Now let's play the same progression we had earlier and use inversions. So we had C, G, A minor, and F. One, five, six, four. Using inversions, we can play the same progression like this. So that's the exact same chord progression, but just by adding inversions to my playing, it felt like something completely different and more sophisticated. And that's the power of inversions. Okay, now before you can start to play the songs that you want, we still have to learn about the left. What you will be doing on the left is basically supporting the right when playing chords. There's three basic positions that we're going to use. For the first one, we're going to play one note on the left, and that note will be the root of the chord that we play on the right hand. So if I play C, I have the root, the third, and the fifth. And what I'm going to do on my left is simply replay the root note. So C, played on my left. First position. For the second position, I'm going to add the fifth to my left. So the fifth, root, third, and fifth. The fifth is G, so I'm going to add G on my left. And that's the second position. It adds a little more thickness to the chord. 
for the third position, I'm going to replay again the root. Root, fifth, and root again. That's the position you're going to use if you want to play with more power. You're playing a lot of notes using that position so the chord is heavier. Other example for that, let's play F major. The first position, I'm going to play the root. Second position, root and fifth. And the third, root, fifth and root again. Now let's play our chord progression C, G, A minor and F only using the second position on the left. We have this. Now let's go a little bit heavier and play the third position. As you can see, I also used inversions on my right hand. And now you're finally ready to play. You have all you need to practice and learn songs. You can check out my YouTube channel or go to my website and tap free tutorial in the search bar and you'll get several tutorials to learn from so you can improve your knowledge and your playing. The PDFs for the series can be downloaded for free as well. I'll leave a link in the description for you. As always, thank you for watching the series so far and happy practicing.